Hi everyone, welcome back. I thought I will create one more video to cover this topic, uh, the form fields, etc. How this form submission is happening? How can we change the action of the form if we have some other another endpoint right of the forms? How can we do that? How can we achieve it? So I thought I will create another video. So in previous video we have uh, created this form right, and let's see that JSON file which we have create uh, added. So this is the JSON file, and if we start it. Uh, the total number of fields, uh, the limit, etc. Okay, the data, data field is where the date, the attributes are coming in picture. So, for heading, we will just use the type heading and whatever headline we want to give. Uh, that is name. Okay, we can map it with here. This is our heading. Please fill out the form. That is label. Okay, uh, we want to give any placeholder, etc. Option whether it is mandatory if it is not mandatory just leave it blank again uh, description you see we if you notice here it is type heading so it has become heading but if it is just a plain text we just need to give type as plain text and then label label is here right and then again if it is mandatory no then type text is input field if you want to make it mandatory then x mandatory is equal to x right if you want to give any placeholder holder value um, we can provide some placeholder value right we'll try it and then again text uh, this is text type is equal to text right and so on we have so many places uh, so many fields uh, what we'll do it's a very lengthy one right we'll just have maybe a simplified version where we don't need all these fields what we'll do we'll just create uh, two fields headline is okay um, description is still fine instead of quote we will say it uh, name name and rather i'll name it as first name likewise we have a simplified form first name and last name just consider we need to Submit it to um, some uh, some API. I mean, we want to save it to some external database. The use case can be multiple. So I'll just uh, take its uh, last name name. Okay, no placeholder. I just don't want to give any placeholder for this, right? And uh, I don't need other fields, quotation, quote source, quote source, blah, blah, blah. So many things are there. We don't need Let's very well. Let's have a very simplified version, right? Right. So we have this first name and last name, first name and last name and what is this confirmation okay what is this confirmation field um select the reason country etc we have deleted okay this is just a hidden field or something right okay uh, finally it will go to this thank you page okay so saved it okay and let's let's commit it so what I will do, I will just go here, refresh it and my JSON is here, I will commit it. Done and let me refresh this page. Okay, looks like I have deleted something where we have the submit field as well because the submit field is not the submit field itself is gone. Okay, so let's see what we have deleted. So uh, maybe what I will do, I'll just copy paste it in the next window where I will do control set. Okay, yeah, I deleted by mistake, I deleted submit also. So it's good right we with errors we learn how do we 
how do we do learning we we do mistakes and then we learn right so i'll add it uh, okay here i'll add it comma and it is added right and also let me change the this is, i don't like it if you please please headline please fill out the form below yeah, it looks good enter your favorite quote etc description this i don't like because enter your enter your form okay let's save it sorry i need to copy paste it here save it and here i will refresh this add it commit it okay it's done commit is successful let's go back to our page and refresh this page okay please fill out the form first name last name and submit is coming okay now first name and last name though both are mandatory fills okay let's try something and let me open inspect mode we are developers so we should know what is happening right so i'll just try check the, click on submit okay mandatory fields we are getting error i'll just fill out my name ritesh mittal and i'll submit it now let's see what happens if i submit it you should see a network call happening and this is the api endpoint now what is the url it's uh, this is the api endpoint right the domain is ours of course but the actual api doc api endpoint you are really slash blocks slash form form okay and we should see all our uh, attributes the parameters in the request uh, in the request uh, no in, not in the request order but the in the payload you see the data first name and last name both are going yeah, why it is not capturing last name but it's okay I mean, let's not be worried why it is. Have we filled the last name? It is taking just data first name and first name and middle. Okay, something is not correct with this attribute, but it's okay. I can quickly check though. Oh, uh, first name. Oh, we see this. So, <laughs> my mistake for last name also, I have added as first name. So, last name first name last name okay let's save it commit it it's quick we are just doing it in fractions of seconds i'll refresh it the second time i'll submit this form just to be less than a minute ritesh okay. the browser is helping that you fill the form i am going to fill the form for for you okay let's submit it again and this time we should see data first name last name it is going fine now uh, this is the api endpoint and this is my payload and according to that if the api is available we'll get the response i'm more interested in how do we how have we uh, configured this endpoint api endpoint because maybe we have a api endpoint gateway uh, from there we have uh, api endpoints exposed we want to use those endpoints and then uh, you know we, we we want to achieve it how how can we change the api endpoint right so in the javascript right that form.js i found how how we are creating the action action is uh, action is what uh, which is making the api right this is api action what it says whatever is the path name and dot split it with the dot json and take the the first take the zeroth part uh, that will become the action so the dot json file if i see my dot json file where is my dot json file this is my dot json file right so what it is doing is this is taking the whole path right and maybe like let me just copy paste here so the whole path and then it is taking till dot json 
okay split and then take the zero one and it is dot json split it means this part this part okay and then it is becoming the api endpoint okay if we want to change it where we have stored our dot json file we have stored our json file here okay it means if you want to change the api endpoint we want we need to change the uh, the json file or we want we need to change the uh, this javascript file if we want to change the logic either one way would be i'll just change uh, whatever is my api endpoint here in the js file itself that is one way the second way would be i'll just change the path of this json file let's try that so what i'm going to do here uh, i have this json file right i will create maybe um, one more folder here and this time i say json file this is my json file i'll move it here right i have moved my json file here and i'll just uh, refresh it and we can put this json file actually in the in the google docs itself because that is also doable right I'll refresh it and this time it says okay I have added I have deleted so I'll just add both of them commit commit close and what is the path it's inside JSON file okay let's go back here and uh, try our form let me close it it should break ideally because the path is no more there it's changed right so we need to go back here and the path is now inside form inside form we have json file and then inside that we have json so inside form we have slash json file and then we have the json let me okay let me preview it now we'll go back refresh it here form dot sorry i have not previewed preview Now let's see, I'll inspect it again and uh, let's fill the form again. Okay, let's fill the form again. So I'll go to network tab, Ritesh Mittal submitted and let's see the endpoint and this time we should see the JSON file is also coming in the path. So right now it's in code, that JSON file, but we can also put the JSON file here in our structure like and just relate it with for example in our dam as it we put upload the json file and then we can use it like a like as a asset similar same similar to that only either we can put it in our code as a configuration or we can also put it uh, as an asset uh, in google document or in the sharepoint location okay so what we have covered the i mean the whole concept behind was uh, the dynamic functionalities are possible right using Franklin API executions are uh, are possible we can uh, fetch the API we can hit the third party APIs get the information we can manipulate that or data what we are receiving from the JSON as a JSON structure or uh, using the rest APIs right and then after that we can build our user experience yeah and it's so amazing thank you so much so much for watching uh, stay connected